Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video update. Today's Friday, October 23rd. Hope everybody had a great week of trading. Take a look at the S&P. Uh, give you a quick uh, synopsis of my thoughts leading up to the election and then a little bit about the, you know, through the election as well. You know, we've been talking about uh, looking for new highs leading up to the election. We've had this pullback looking like it's starting to firm up here and potentially start to bounce. I do think we have higher prices into next week and, uh, you know, at least testing these by the election. And then from there, you know, a lot can happen, right? We, you know, nobody knows. But I think, um, you know, the expectation that I think a lot of people have is that if Biden wins, Biden's bad for stocks and the market's going to go down. Uh, Trump is good for stocks. If Trump wins, the market's going to go up. And I'm not so sure that that's the case. And and here's why. The market likes certainty. And and so let's say, you know, like I said, a lot could change between now and then. But right now, Biden is leading the polls. And I think that if if Biden does end up winning, that I think that we could, in the short term, see higher prices in stocks. So, uh, you know, right after the election, I would not be surprised if we see the market really rally, take off um, if Biden wins. Now, the expectation, according to the polls, is that uh, Trump is behind, right? And so if Trump does pull out a victory, that could be a little bit of a surprise to the market. And we actually may see some short-term downside in the market, which is the opposite of what a lot of people think. So that, that's kind of my initial thought going in. You know, the market a lot of times will do the exact opposite of what you might think. And it's a little game of chess of, of you know, the reaction of, of what the market does based on based on news and different events that come out. And so that is that's kind of my expectation. Uh, but we'll see what happens. And again, we're, we're going to let price action lead, especially with our day trading. Uh, and then we are going to manage our portfolio mechanically as we always do. One thing that that we will start doing as we get closer to the election is we may start lightening up the number of positions, the amount of capital allocated to our portfolio. So positions that we currently have on, we may start taking off as we get closer, but we're still going to have a decent number of positions. We're still going to stay mechanical. We're not going to do anything crazy just because an election is happening. Uh, we're still going to continue to stay mechanical. So anyway, just some initial thoughts of what we're what we're looking at here. And, uh, and and what we what we look to potentially expect uh, going forward. So that is it. Let's jump into the alerts for the week, starting with Monday. Uh, did a opening trade in Microsoft, did a pre-earnings long straddle. And the the strategy, just as we teach in our earnings course, Kurt, just as we teach in our earnings course, is we are looking for to enter these typically when we get a little bit of a dip in implied volatility. So if we look at Microsoft, you can see it, it started to have a dip in uh, implied volatility. We got in on Monday and our expectation is that uh, implied volatility is going to increase into earnings. Now it has not done that yet. It's actually contracted even more into today. Uh, and so if we take a look, you can see we are down a little bit on the trade, a couple hundred dollars. Uh, but if we get a, a pop in implied volatility and a decent size move, uh, we could still uh, book a profit on this trade. So that is what we're looking for in Microsoft. Next trade, closing adjusting trade in the queues. So we closed out one set of short call verticals. So we we're just kind of lightening up our uh, lightening up our short delta, looking for that potential uh, move higher into the election. Uh, we still have one set of short call verticals in the queues. So let's take a look at that. And we're up about three hundred dollars since we did our last roll here. So looking for some downside. Even though we are looking for upside uh, prices, you know, leading up to the election, that doesn't mean we're we're getting rid of all of our short delta. I said we're lightening up our short delta, but we're still keeping some because obviously anything can happen. We always want to have a little bit of protection to the downside in case things do fall apart. And this is one of those trades. So we've got some downside uh, room with the QQQ trade. So we'll continue to hold that. Next trade is opening trade in Netflix. So we did an earnings iron duck in Netflix. So they announced earnings. We put this on uh, the day of earnings. They announced after the market closed that day. And we had a max profit of 692, which is also our max loss that we would exit at if it got to that point. Uh, things worked out well. And if you let's take a look at a chart of Netflix, we closed this out today. 
And uh, if we look at a chart, uh, after earnings, price came down right smack dab into the middle of our duck head. Now, it, it did start to go down, down, down. It was getting close, close, close to our break, break even. We were never really down on the trade, maybe a couple dollars at most. Got a little bit of a bounce today. Ended up booking almost max profit on the trade. So nice, nice trade in uh, Netflix. Uh, we, we did a pre-earnings long call and ended up just closing this out right before earnings, took a loss on this trade, never got the upside momentum leading up to the earnings announcement that we were hoping for. So as we pulled back uh, uh, right here, we got in looking for a little bit of a bounce in price leading up to earnings, never got that, so we ended up just closing that one out. Next trade, closing adjusting trade in IWM. So similar to what we did in the queues, we had some, in this one we had some long put verticals in IWM. Uh, one of them got down to two days to expiration, so we either needed to roll or close, and so we just decided to close that to again lighten up on our short deltas. So if we look at IWM, we're still holding one of those, and uh, it's outside of range here. So we'll be looking to, this is in November, so we've still got plenty of time, still got 28 days. So we're gonna go ahead and hold this one. Uh, and, uh, and if we get some downside, that'll benefit that trade. If not, we'll potentially roll that out to December as we uh, get closer to expiration. Closing trade in SPX, so we had a weekly double calendar that we closed, booked a hundred and a little over a hundred bucks on this one. Uh, we closed it out on Thursday. Had we held it till today on Friday, we could have booked a little bit more profit, but you know, with the with the implied volatility contraction between the front and back week that we see a lot of times on Friday, we decided just to take that money and run. And um, and uh, and and so we booked a nice little profit on that one. Uh, we also opened a new weekly double calendar in the next expiration cycle. Uh, at that time, it was eight and 11 days. So let's take a look at SPX. We've got a few different positions here. Starting with, let's go to that uh, weekly double calendar first, which is these ones here. Oh, that's an iron duck. Well, there's an iron duck. We're up about 200 bucks on that one. That one expires on the 29th. Uh, so we will close that closer to expiration. And then here's our weekly double calendar that we put on. You see we're up about 40 bucks on this one. If we get a little bit of implied volatility expansion into next week, which I expect as we get closer to, uh, to the election, we will get some implied volatility expansion, and that should help the difference between our front and back week here. So while we are getting a little dip in our tent, uh, I would expect that to push back up into next week, but we'll see. Uh, so we're up right now. And then lastly, we've got another iron duck, and this one is going to be held through the election. And uh, we're up currently about 95 bucks on this. Uh, got a lot of room to the downside, still have a potential to, uh, to book max profit on that. So we're going to hold on to that for now. Next trade, Amazon did a pre-earnings long call vertical. So with Amazon being such a large, uh, large symbol, you know, $3,100, $3,200 stock, um, instead of buying a, a pre-earnings long call, we did a vertical just to lower the buying power requirement. Uh, in this case, we're targeting 50% of max profit. So let's take a look at where we're at with Amazon here. Again, similar to what we were trying to do in Netflix, we're just looking for, as we've had this pullback and, and we expect some upside momentum in the overall market and specifically these tech stocks leading into earnings, looking for a bounce. Uh, Amazon announces earnings uh, on the 29th. And so looking for some upside momentum into that earnings announcement. If price can climb just up to, you know, in this area here uh, with the with the uh, theta decay, we'll be at a, almost at a point of booking 50 percent of max profit. So, you know, let's call it, you know, 30, 3280, 3290. You know, if it gets up there, you know, to this area right here. Um, as we as we get closer to that uh, earnings date, we should be able to book a profit, and and you can do that in in think or swim by you know using your theoretical calendar here. So if you theoretically go through time, you see what that P and L line does. It continues to increase. So by the time that you get to the 29th, you know you only have to be about out to here 3260, 3270 to be at 50% of max profit, and so that's what we're looking for out of Amazon. 
Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in ZB. So we had a short strangle, or we have a short strangle in ZB. Uh, ended up rolling this one out. We had 28 days to expiration, but price moved lower and we needed to roll our calls down. So we went ahead and just rolled that out to the 62 day cycle at the same time. So let's take a look at ZB. Uh, you can see price is hanging out right here. So kind of widened out our break evens to the downside. We got a lot of room to the upside. If we get a little bit of a bounce in bonds, we'll be right back to center. And uh, we'll just wait for, more, for some more theta decay in ZB. And then lastly was the closing that earnings iron duck that we booked a nice profit in in Netflix was our last trade for the day, last trade for the week. So those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of our other positions, starting with ES, uh, another one of our short delta plays. Price is a little bit out of range here on, on this long put vertical. So looking for some downside action to get back into range on that. Uh, gold, we've got an iron condor in gold. We're up. Uh, after all adjustments and you know taking them off and putting them back on, we're up over a thousand bucks on this trade. Once we get to about 30 to 40 percent of max profit on this one, we'll take it off and close the trade before the election, and uh, and just hold on um, until potentially afterwards to add another gold position back in. Natty Gas, uh, we're in good shape here too. We're almost at 50 percent of max profit since we rolled this trade. Uh, we've got a um, we've still got 32 days. So if we get over 50% of max profit, we'll probably roll this out uh, just to give us a little a um, little bit more duration heading into earnings. So we're currently the next cycle currently has 66 days to expiration. Uh, so next week that'll be down to 60, uh, which will also coincide with potentially us being at over 50% of max profit if price stays in a decent range. Um, so that's the plan in Nat Gas. So hopefully we can uh, book a nice profit on that, working our way back to profits. Uh, Apple, we've got a uh, short delta play here. It's a long put vertical. Price is a little out of range with with the rally that we've seen in Apple since we rolled this last. Uh, we are heading into earnings. We're gonna hold this through earnings and I think we'll probably get a little bit of a bounce into earnings there as well. Uh, but then after earnings, we'll see what happens, but we'll be holding this. We're holding it for that short Delta exposure. Uh, same thing with John Deere. I mean, this thing's just been on a crazy run, uh, but we're holding this for short Delta, looking for some cyclicality in the big green machines. Uh, hopefully we see a little bit of downside in that uh, before long. This one is just inside range since we rolled it, but got plenty of room for some, uh, for some downside benefit there. DIA, we've got a couple of short call verticals as well. One is just out of range here. And this one is just out of, outside of range. So uh, those are both in November. Got plenty of time just holding those for that short Delta exposure. I mentioned IWM, Microsoft, Qs, SMH. We've got a short strangle here in SMH. We're up a few hundred dollars since we did our last roll. If we get a little bit more downside back to center, uh, that would benefit this trade. Otherwise, just waiting for some more time to pass. Uh, SPY. I've been looking to add another iron condor here, but I may just, I may wait till after the election to do that because if we added one, we would do that out in December. And obviously that's gonna take us uh, through the election. So I'm gonna probably wait until after the election and then add one in December. Uh, this one here in November is hanging out just in the upper end of the range. So we'll, we'll just let this one play out for now and then uh, potentially add one uh, after the election. XBI, we've got this short strangle, which is adjusted into a straddle right at the 105 strike. Price is hanging out in the upper end of the range. Could use a little downside action to get back to center there. And then lastly, XLK. Uh, so this is a long put vertical price just outside of range. So th those are all of our trades. Those are all the alerts. Um, as far as day trading, I was traveling this week, so uh, only day traded today, only streamed live today. Um, and uh, But if you are in the day trading and you attend that room, make sure you check out the live stream room. In fact, let me bring it up here. Uh, inside the live stream room, you'll see this schedule. Make sure you're checking this. Next week, we're going to do something a little bit different. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday are all 8.30 a.m. Central as normal. Uh, but on Thursday and Friday, we are going to do it a little bit later in the morning. A uh, couple of things. So one, I'll be getting our most of our uh, alert portfolio uh, trades out 
within the first hour of the day, and then this will allow us to jump on the live stream an hour later and uh, and take advantage of some runners. And I know that some of the members have wanted to see me manage those a little bit later in the morning. So we'll be starting an hour later and going an hour later in the morning in the live stream. So make sure you check that out. And then um, uh, into next week, a uh, couple things. We are going to, um, so Tuesday the 3rd is obviously election day. So on the 4th and 5th, we are going to start first thing at the market open, 8.30 a.m., but we're probably going to go longer in the day, uh, especially if there's, I mean, if there's not a lot going on, we'll, we, we'll probably just cut out a little bit kind of normal time. But if there's some cool stuff, some action going on, we want to be able to take advantage of that. So we may we may stream for a half day from 8.30 a.m. to noon or something like that. Uh, we'll just kind of play it by ear. Uh, and then Friday, uh, we'll be offline, uh, no live stream on Friday the 6th. So make sure you keep your eye on that schedule. I'll be populating uh, the following weeks here as we get closer. And uh, look forward to seeing you all there. Uh, if you didn't see the day trading recap today, we always post that in the Facebook group. So you can check that out there. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, have a good weekend and we will catch you next week.